When the mouse is named lift, can it lift your fingers? Well, it should not if it tries to be a good mouse. So let us have a look at this lift. Oh, and thanks to Acro for sending this review unit. So let us test this. Now NZXT's design language is super great. They are consistent with their white and purple packaging in every product they make. From inside this box, we get another cardboard box. The mouse was projected inside a plastic bag. Alongside this mouse, we get a quick start guide for users that need them. Overall, I like the unboxing experience. It was standard with no bells and whistles attached. I am giving this a 7.5 of 10. Okay, come into the shape. I have good things to say. Now this mouse is ambidextrous. So all of you lefties out there won't fix a single problem. But there are only thumb buttons on the left side of this mouse. So that will take a getting used to. Also the mouse is big. So if you have a small palm like many users out there, you might face some problems having a proper grip of this thing. But overall, I like this slightly taking face of this mouse. It almost looks like a wave if you see it from the side. A... Uh, a wave? Anyways, it is extremely comfortable and this thing is surely very good to use. An 8.5 of 10. Alright, now coming to the surface. This mouse has a matte finish. I mean, the paint job is super elegant. But the white variant does pick up some dirt out of nowhere. Oh, and also, never use it while eating Doritos. You are going to ruin this mouse. Also, the surface of this mouse is not much of a fingerprint magnet. But the matte finish does seem to get worn out over time. Like, I had this thing for a little over one week and I could easily see that the matte finish is getting worn out and it is getting glossy at places. But I have to say that the lift, well, it is built very well. Yes, it is a lightweight mouse, but it still manages to deliver a very premium experience. But the only problem I have is that the matte finish might just get worn out over time. And considering all of that, I'm giving this a 7 of 10. Okay, now coming to the buttons. This mouse has some of the best buttons that I've ever used. The left and right clicks are super tactile. And I mean, once you get your hands on this mouse, you'll click it because you want to click it and not because you have to click it. Okay, now enough of sweet talk. This mouse has a total of 6 buttons. I mean, the layout is pretty simple. You have your left and right click and then you have your two thumb buttons on the side and you have a mouse scroll wheel which acts as a middle mouse button and one GPI button. Now, although this mouse is advertised as ambidextrous, you only get the thumb buttons on one side of it which is kind of not so impressive. Now coming to the quality of the scroll wheel on this mouse, I have to say this is one of the best scroll wheels that I've ever used. However, it does feel a bit flimsy once you have been using it for a long time. I mean, when you compare the scroll wheel to the rest of the mouse, it it is a bit underwhelming. But still, this has to be one of the best mouse buttons that I've ever clicked, a 9 of 10. Now the lift has 3 feet in total. The first one is this big chunk at the bottom of the mouse. The second one is around the sensor. And the third and the final one is this chunk at the top. Now the mouse feet are really high quality. They are not meant to be taken apart and a normal user will not take the mouse feet apart anyway. But for a geek like me, well, it is a bit of a disappointment. It's okay, we are the minority, right? Overall, the mouse feet do a very good job in holding the mouse together, so I'm giving this an 8 of 10. Now, NZXT uses the high-end Pixar PMW3389 sensor with this thing. And though we can all agree that 3389 is a really high-quality sensor, and also NZXT is using an unaltered version of the 3389 in this mouse. Now, this sensor goes from 100 dpi all the way up to 16,000 dpi, which is uh, more of a marketing number to be honest. Other than that, this mouse retains the programmable LED function of this sensor and it also comes with an infrared LED. Now, tracking with this sensor is quite good. It is very responsive and also I did not face any pixel skipping or acceleration issues while using this thing. Overall, I'm giving this an 8.5 of 10. Okay, now let us talk about the elephant in this room, performance. And spoiler alert, the results are quite impressive. Now, this mouse comes with configurable LOD, which is pretty impressive. Now, users can choose between a 2mm LOD and a 3mm LOD and in both of these settings, the results are just on point. With the 2mm LOD preset, the LOD was coming between 1 and 2 DVDs which is perfect because 1 and 2 LODs is between 1.2 and 2.4 mm and with 3 mm the results are between 2 and 3 DVDs which again is absolutely perfect. Now coming to the jitter test which measures the noise that was caused due to movements that did not happen with the sensor, we get some impressive results. Now at low LODs we are talking like 800 CPI, 1600 CPI, there is almost no noise. Now when we said high DPI's like 5000 and 10,000, there is a noticeable noise. Now anyways, high resolutions like 5000 and 10,000 are nonsense for daily usage, so users will be fine. Now in the CPI divergence test, which measures the actual resolution the sensor tracks in when we set a particular resolution from the software, we get some interesting results. Now in every set resolution, there is a bit of deviation. Some will be caused due to human error, but the results are always consistently below 1% and this is 
super impressive. In a perfect control speed test, the results are pretty identical to any mouse I have tested. Now, Pixar says that this sensor is capable of tracking up to 400 IPS, which is quite high. We did not see the sensor hitting 400 IPS anywhere. Like the highest results we got were like 5 meters per second, which is nowhere near 400 inches. Anyway, you can do the math. In a speed related accuracy variance test, which measures the accuracy of the sensor at different speeds, we see a rock stable graph. Now, in this test, I did a fast swipe with this mouse and then slowly brought it back to its original position. And the result is rock stable. I mean, I am impressed. Now, there are some little deviations here and there, but you will have to consider the human error point at some places as well. Okay, now coming to the polling red test, this sensor can be customized within 500 Hz and 1000 Hz. And in both of these set frequencies, the results are pretty much every in the graph. I mean just look at this 500 Hz graph. The results are just all over the place. Now overall this mouse is not perfect in terms of performance. But hey, it is a $50 product. There will be some caveats. And I cannot say that this mouse is underwhelming. There are some really accurate and to the point results that we got with this thing. Overall NZXT, you have done a great job. I'm giving this a 9 of 10. Okay, enough chit chat. I'll shut up for a second now. Now as you heard already, the clicks are super satisfying and just as I mentioned earlier, you will click this mouse because you want to click it, not because you have to. A solid 8 of 10 here. Now coming to the software. This mouse packs the extremely polished NZXT cam software with it and oh do I have good things to say about this thing. The UI is clear and super minimalist, so props to that. Also the software allows you to change the DPI settings in 4 stages. You can choose less and even 1 but no more than 4. The DPI goes from 100 to 16,000 in steps of 1. 100 each, so you have full freedom in choosing the DPI that you feel the best. The software also allows you to change the LOD and polling rate very easily. Now, the best part about this software is that it allows you to set macros and even remap the buttons. Now, you can only remap four of the buttons on this mouse, so left and right clicks are just left out. Now, coming to the lighting customization, it does feel a bit deprived. Now, you can alter the brightness in the first thing, and then you can choose between a base and a reactive color. Now, you can choose between both or just one of them or none at all. It is completely up to you. But the number of presets in this software can feel a bit limiting to most of the users. In the reactive mode too, this trend continues. There aren't a lot of presets in this thing. However, I appreciate the color picker. It allows you to choose between a gradient or you can just input the color code or you can even choose between RGB values. This is pretty well done. Overall, the software manages to deliver a lot. And I mean, NZXT Cam is a really polished software. There are very few bugs in this thing and users will definitely love using this software. I'm giving this an 8 of 10. Now, coming to the lighting. I think this is a wasted potential. The mouse has no RGB on the ventral side to maintain a minimalist look. Hence all of the LEDs has been pushed to the dorsal side and most of it cannot even be seen during normal usage. I mean there are a chunk of LEDs on both sides but still most of it just gets hidden under the mouse. I think the best thing that these LEDs can do is just illuminate the borders of this thing. Also the biggest problem with this mouse is that after you've kept the LEDs turned on for a long time, it just heats up the mouse's body temperature. Now, now, if you live in a cold country, this will not be a problem because this mouse can act as a palm heater. But if you live in somewhere like this, where temperature stays like around 35 degrees all of the year, and I'm talking in degrees centigrade, it can become super annoying. Overall, there's a huge wasted potential in the lighting of this mouse. I am giving this a 7 of 10. Okay, now this thing costs around $50 in the USA. In India, there is a huge stock problem with this thing. You'll hardly find this mouse anywhere in stock with the leading sellers. But at $50, this mouse is a solid competitor to the glorious model O-. I mean, there are some caveats with this thing, but obviously this is an option to consider. A 7 of 10 in the value aspect. The NZXT Lift is a great competitor for the price. It looks minimalist, it comes with awesome performance, and I can see no reason why people will not purchase this mouse. Yeah, there are a few very good competitors to this mouse, like the glorious model O- I just mentioned. But still, this thing is definitely a worthy competitor. Also, let us have a look at the score. 7.95 of 10. This mouse gets the Cybertector Gold Award. Pretty well deserved to be honest. Now if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you're looking for a mouse that is cheaper than this thing, check out this MSI Clutch GM11 that we reviewed a while back. That was pretty solid to be honest.